Welcome to Meadowdale Online. My name is Brandon Knight, and I'm a deacon here at the church. Today, you're going to hear some worship. We're going to have some speaking from one of our great speakers. And then you're going to have a time to respond after that. And don't forget the comment section below. Chat with your friends. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. We hope that what you experience and what you hear today encourages you to on your path to know Jesus and grow in him. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, everyone. My name is Clay. I'm the music minister here on staff. We're so happy to see you here with us this morning. So, hey, we are about to sing together. So I just want to encourage you, stand with us, sing at the top of your lungs. Don't hold anything back. Let's really capture this moment and let's just worship God with everything that we have this morning. felt alone. I'm not necessarily talking about being by yourself. What, what I mean is more of this feeling of being apart, right? We felt alone before in crowds. I know that I have where you're around a lot of people and, and you just still feel alone. But the idea that you're lonely, this idea of, of being completely on your own, being completely apart from other people, not feeling as though anyone's on your side, this idea of loneliness. My name is Matt Knight, and I'm the minister to students here at Meadowdale Baptist Church, and I'm excited to get to bring the word to you this morning. Um, I know for me, I've had a couple different occasions where I have felt the feeling of, of being alone, this feeling of loneliness. Um, and, and really, it's happened on two major occasions in my life. The first being when I first moved to New Orleans um, for seminary, um, moving seven hours away from home, seven hours away from literally every single person that I knew was difficult. And so at the beginning of that journey, I felt alone. I didn't know anybody. I felt completely apart from everyone. I felt it completely away from everyone, and it was, it was difficult. 
Uh, the second time happened about seven years ago, and in a very similar way, and that was when I first moved here to Calhoun. Uh, again, away from family, away from friends, didn't know anybody. It was, a, it was a difficult time. Now, both of those occasions were temporary. Both of those occasions were, were times where it didn't last very long. I, I got to know people. I, I made new friends. I, I built relationships with people, and the feeling went away. But honestly, those big situations are not often the only times that we feel alone. In fact, it's often the small moments in life, those moments that are connected to the rest of our life that are the most difficult when we feel alone. Those moments when we just feel like nobody cares about us, nobody is on our side. And the question is then, what do we do when we have those moments? What do we do when we're not sure what to do amongst this loneliness? And I think first we need to understand why it is that those lonely moments are so difficult. Why it is those moments of apartness are so hard. You see, we, if we look in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, we see that it is not good for man to be alone. God says this um, before he creates woman for man. He, he's indicating that man was built for community. Man was built for togetherness. We're, we're built for connection with one another. And this is why when we're not in that community, when we don't feel that sense of connection, that we begin to struggle that we begin to have a difficult time. And don't get me wrong, I'm an, I'm an introvert. I'm someone who enjoys being alone. I'm someone who recharges, actually, uh, when I am by myself. But there's a big difference between being alone and feeling alone. right? There's a big difference between getting to stay at home on a, on a Saturday night and watch Netflix and feeling like nobody is there for you, feeling like nobody cares about you. And so when we feel alone, a couple things happen. The first is that we feel like no one cares. We feel like nobody cares about us. There's nothing worse than that feeling of no one caring for you. There's nothing worse than that feeling of just being unimportant to others. We all want someone to be in our corner. We all want someone to be on our side. And so when we don't feel that, it, it can be difficult. That lack of support can be something that's very, very hard to handle. And the second thing that tends to happen because of that is we feel overwhelmed by even the smallest of issues. We feel overwhelmed by every problem that comes our way. It can be a work problem, an issue with the family. It can be really anything at all. But those smallest of issues can be blown huge when we don't feel as though anyone's on our side, when we don't feel as though anyone cares about us. Because honestly, problems that we face in life are made much, much easier by the people who walk alongside of us, the people who are with us in our daily lives that support us and, and give us encouragement. And so when those moments come, when we feel alone, it's as though we don't know how to handle them. It's as though we don't have the support that we need to be able to overcome even the smallest of problems. Now, thankfully, this idea of being alone is not a new idea. It's not something that hasn't happened before. In fact, we find in Scripture many occasions where individuals were alone. And today we're going to look specifically at a specific moment in the life of the prophet Elijah. Now, Elijah was a prophet from Tishbe in the, in the land of Gilead. And he was a prophet during the time of King Ahab of Israel. Now, Ahab was one of the most corrupt kings. He was like the worst guy um, who was king in Israel. Like, it was really, really, really bad while he was in charge. And his wife, Jezebel, wasn't much better. You see, Ahab worshipped Baal, worshipped Asherah, and according to 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 33, he did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than did any other king before him. Like, that's a big deal. He made God more angry than any of the kings of Israel before him. 
And so Elijah, as a prophet, as, as someone who spoke on behalf of God to the people, he had his work cut out for him. He had a lot of pressure on him as he uh, began his ministry. And the first mention of him, the first time we see his name mentioned in the Bible, is performing a difficult task. He has a very bold, difficult task to accomplish. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, it says, Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. That's a pretty bold statement. That's a pretty big deal. You see, we learn a lot about Elijah in this passage, right? We, we see that it takes a bold person to make a proclamation like this straight to the king of Israel. Like at this moment, the kings could have said, hey, you're dead. Like he could have had him killed. He could have had him thrown into prison. And yet Elijah was faithful to the Lord, faithful to what the Lord said, and does what he says. But what comes next is interesting, and we find ourselves in an early example of social distancing for Elijah. Verse 2 goes on to say, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And so Elijah hears from the Lord, right? He's just done this amazing thing, proclaiming drought on the land. And he's now been told to go to this ravine by himself, to live in this ravine for who knows how long, and that the Lord is going to send ravens to bring him food. And then he's going to also get to drink from the brook that flows through the ravine. And honestly, we don't know how long he is in this ravine. Scripture doesn't really tell us, but we do know that in verse 7, that it was some time later before he left. In fact, it, it wasn't until the brook itself dries up that he leaves. And so we know that that must have taken a bit of time from the proclamation of the drought to when it finally takes full effect for Elijah to be stuck there. So he was there for likely months before he, he actually left. And so I imagine that being left alone by yourself in a ravine with ravens as your only company can be quite difficult. I have in this picture in my head of, of like, uh, of like Tom Hanks in Castaway, right? Like talking to the ravens, and, and I'm sure that like he probably had the ravens named before he was done in that ravine. And so what can we learn from Elijah about being alone? What can we learn from him about what it takes to withstand that ravine? I think the first thing that we need to see here is that we must learn obedience in God. We must learn obedience in him. You see, Elijah was brought to his seclusion by God. Likely for his own well-being, right? He had just gone uh, to the king and announced this uh, drought on the land. And it was likely, especially once the drought began, that the king wanted him dead. That the king wanted him brought to justice, brought to uh, be taken care of. And... It was likely that being hidden away was the safest place for Elijah. And I can imagine that as time went on, that Elijah likely was tempted to risk it, right? He was probably tempted to just leave the ravine, go find some city or town to go hang out in, and get some social connection for a while, uh, and, and connect with people for a little while. And despite that, despite that feeling he might have felt... He remained obedient to God. We see that in verse 5 that, that Elijah did what God told him to do. That Elijah was obedient in this difficult time. He stayed where he was. He made friends with the ravens. He, he did what God called him to do. And truthfully, we too must remain obedient in our time of loneliness. 
We must be willing to be obedient in the time of loneliness because truthfully, when we're, when we're alone, when we're, when we're in that, that feeling of, of apartness from people, when we feel like no one cares, it's really, really easy to feel like God isn't even there. It's really easy to think, man, God doesn't care about me. God doesn't love me. And then it's really easy to fall into, t- into temptation. It's really easy to give in to those things that you know go against what God wants for your life. It's really easy, especially in those moments of apartness, to give in to those things that feel good temporarily, but in the long run are no good for you. And truthfully, what we must do instead is turn to God and maintain our personal acts of devotion and worship. Our personal connection to God. To not let that stray at all, not let that wane at all. Because we know that even though we feel alone, even though we may feel like no one cares, that God is always there with us. That no matter what, God is with us. That's the first thing. Secondly, we must trust that God will provide. Knowing that God is always with us, knowing that God always takes care of us and cares for us, helps us to remember that God will provide for us. You see, Elijah was completely at God's mercy during this time, um, particularly for food, right? Uh, he had no food with him. He had no way of getting food as long as he was in the ravine. And so he relied solely on God to provide him bread and meat. And thankfully, God sent those ravens each and every day to provide for him, and he trusted that. He trusted that that would be the case. And it can be scary to be completely reliant on someone else. It can be difficult to rely on someone else to take care of us. We're not very good at that, right? We like to have control. We like to have our say on how our lives are run. We, we like to be in control. And so it's difficult for us to say, you know what, I'm going to trust fully in you to take care of me. I'm going to trust you to take care of everything, and I'm just going to sit back and relax and let you do what you do. And yet, what we find is that when we do, God is completely reliable, he's completely trustworthy, and he will take care of us. He will provide for us, right? Jesus tells us that even the the birds of the air, they have no they 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 have no uh, guarantee of food yet god feeds them every day and so we need to be like the birds and trust god not only that jesus tells us to come to god like little children why does he tell us that because little children rely fully on their parents to provide little children rely fully on their parents to take care of them particularly in difficult times particularly in those troubled times And so we must come to God like little children, trusting in him fully, relying on him fully to provide for our needs. Even the needs that we don't think he can take care of. It's in those times of loneliness, especially, that we must fully trust that God's going to provide. We must trust that he cares for us and has our best interest at heart. Because honestly, it can be difficult to wonder how God could bring us to this place, how God could allow us to get to that place where we feel so alone, where we feel so set apart. And truthfully, we can even despair because it can be difficult to trust that God cares for us. But we must trust his word. We must trust his word that he cares for us like his children, like we are called children of God. We are adopted into the family and God takes care of his children. So we must trust that he will provide for us. And then third, we must trust that this time of loneliness isn't going to last forever. Elijah may have felt that his time in the ravine was going to last forever. He may have felt like he was never going to see another person the rest of his life. He may have thought that that was his new home and he was going to be there forever. But truthfully, his uh, seclusion, as we see in verse 7... It came to an end. He eventually left the ravine and and interacted with people again and was able to move forward and serve God once more. 
And so we may feel like no one will ever care for us again. We may feel like we're never going to make it out of our seclusion. We're never going to make it out of our ravine. But if we trust God and we rely on God and we're obedient to God, we can know that the ravine won't last forever, that we won't be stuck there forever. And we're going to move past that time in our lives. We're going to move past that and have connections again. And how do we know that? Well, we know that because we trust God and we rely on Him and we know that He wants what's best for us. And we know from His Scripture that it's not good for us to be alone. And so because of that, we know that He is going to do what's best for us. He's going to care for us and we will have connection again. Our time in the ravine won't last forever. And so there can be many, many reasons why God may allow us to go through a time of loneliness, a time set apart from other people. He may be trying to get our attention, right? We have a habit of getting focused so much on the world, getting so uh, distracted by the things around us that we forget about God, that we forget that he's there. And so he may simply be trying to get our attention. He may be trying to say, hey, you need to turn to me. You need to look to me because I care for you. He may also want to strengthen us for the future, right? God uses tests and trials to prepare us for what's ahead, prepare us for the things to come. And so it may be that he's trying to strengthen us in those moments of difficulty, in those moments of struggle, in those moments of loneliness. And we need to allow him to do his work in us. Or he may just be wanting us to rely fully on him. You see, we have a habit, like I said earlier, to want control in our lives, to not rely on anyone, to not trust anyone but ourselves. And God says he wants us to rely on him. He wants us to trust him. And so he may be calling us to rely on him fully, to not try to take things into our own hands, but to let him take control. And Honestly, whatever the reason, whatever the reason that you might find yourself in one of those valleys, those times of separation, those times of loneliness, it's important that we let the work of the Lord come to fruition. It's important that we let God do what he's going to do in our lives. Let God work in our lives. So when you enter that time, we can do what God tells us to do in Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Why? Because I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. That's why. He is God, and he is in control, and he does care for you and for me. And so be still. Trust that God is with you. Remain obedient to him. Rely fully on him and know that he is God. Know that he's in control, and he loves you and wants what's best for you. He will take care of you even in the most difficult of situations. And so if you find yourself today, if you find yourself in one of those moments, but you don't have that connection to God, you don't have that relationship with God, I want to encourage you that it's not too late, that God is there waiting for you. He offers you the free gift of salvation, the free gift of relationship with the Father. He wants you to know Him. He wants you to follow Him. He wants you to love Him as, his father, as your Father. And so it's, it's, it's so simple to accept that gift of salvation, and I want to encourage you to do that today. But as we, as we get ready to move into our time of response, I want to pray for us uh, so that uh, we can begin to uh, work on things that God has for us to work on. Father God, I thank you that no matter the, the ravines, no matter the valleys that we go through in our lives, no matter how we may feel, you are always with us. You care for us and you take care of us even in our darkest of times. Lord, I ask that you would strengthen us in those moments and help us to rely fully on you and, and, and help us to seek you out in those difficult times. We know that you will provide. We know that you will take care of us and we know that through you, the time in the ravine won't last forever. We love you and we thank you for everything that you do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Not 
Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate you and we love having you as a part of Meadowdale. As a reminder, there's a couple ways that you can give to support the work of the church. The first being mailing in a physical check to the church office. Uh, the second being to go to, go to meadowdale.org, click the give button in the top right corner and follow the instructions there to give online. The third being uh, through our texting giving service, which you can find the instructions on your screen right now. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you, and we look forward to seeing you next week.